or below starts assaulting us, that's how it's gonna look. All of a sudden, your friends are talking, and then bloop, bloop, Just they're gone. muted, kind of. They're gone. They're muted. You know, oh, I, muted. I hate that's... to bring this up two weeks in a row, but did you ever see the Black Mirror where John Hamm gets muted? Have you ever? I uh, know. Uh, I have no, not I, actually. I remember. Does it turn him out he's a pedophile? Culture. No. No, because God, every no. every Black Mirror I've ever seen just turns out no. they're a pedophile. You're for some well, reason you're. Rogers an ex- only seen one. <laughs> I've seen I've seen seven episodes of Black Mirror, and each one turns out you didn't have to care. They're a pedo. Look, so the so <laughs> is that the the QAnon Black Mirror? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I've only seen the QAnon Black Mirror episodes. So look, now, to be fair, yes. some of them are really good. There are six or seven pedo episodes but, are the ones i've watched <laughs> I, yeah i think the, the real question here is why are you inexplicably drawn to the seven over four or five seasons roger well i could blame <laughs> someone <laughs> i could blame a certain individual who also loves <laughs> law and order svu Oh, uh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I was about to bring Mariska Hargitay into it, but yeah, Mar- <laughs> Mariska Hargitay. I am in love with her. Absolutely. And I want to be with her. And she also likes six or seven episodes of Black Mirror that she wants to use for inspiration for future episodes of Dun Dun. Oh, sorry. Was that the her- right Dun Dun? Bum, bum. Yeah, that's it. it. Bum, bum. Yeah. Bum, her, bum. Uh, her father Law was order. a carnival Here, strongman. Yours was like a pre- a, pre- a presentation. You're like, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, no, Here's, I wanted strongman. Here's yeah, that was corpse. Law and Order to da. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me my corpse trumpet. <laughs> anyway, we're Werewolf Radar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Werewolf Radar, the world's premier paranormal preparedness podcast. My name is Jordan Dell. I am Nate Baldy. And I am Roger Norquist. Today's episode of Werewolf Radar is brought to you by Monstroco brand Corpse Trumpets. Did you find a corpse? Ooh. Do you want everybody to know about it? Monstroco. Da da. <laughs> I like <laughs> it. <laughs> that one, that I mean, one seems weirdly that's... pertinent to what we were talking about. It is, because I can't I t- tell you how often I've been with you guys and we're in basically, you know, uh, the body situation we come upon a body and we want to learn the other kids in the area and a corpse trumpet would have came in handy a a lot of people don't know that every morning we go jogging together while facetiming Mm, that's true and uh we all three of us in different places find a body at the same time Uh, well so many times we found these bodies and we're like oh geez well we can't i mean we can't call anyone you can't facetime while you're calling someone no, no technology's uh, not there yet. There's no other way to get a hold of so, anybody except by do? turning the corpse into a trumpet. And then that's right. Monstroco, where the Monstroco takes the corpses that are found and they press them <laughs> in a via a, a space age process into these are 100 percent uh up upcycled corpse meat. <laughs> Monstroco, I, corpse trumpets. What the fuck I, is that? I actually, what is that? I have, I have a corpse trumpet with me right now. Okay. I can, I can give you a little play if you'd yeah, like. Yeah, I'm excited to hear play it. it. Don't play it loud because if you do play it loud, they'll think it's the Monstroco corpse finders. They'll, they'll, they'll want to, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what they do. The hideous bone crap. Oh! Corpse I said, trumpet. I said, don't do it loud. It, I'm sure loud. it wasn't loud enough. Oh. To figure it out. Uh, there's a knock at my door. Oh, don't answer it. <laughs> keep the lights off. Let's just keep podcasting. Let's if you get taken, podcasting. you get taken. All right. All right. Well, it's still early January, as many of you are aware. <laughs> uh, we are, we're going to milk this alien fruit, this strange alien uh, theme for all it's worth when, but but it's going fast guys i gotta tell you um you know we're we're not necessarily gonna be able to co- cover all of the aliens that we need to or do you guys no, feel I that have a too? book of like 60 more alien races all pertinent yeah. to the human race mm-hmm. <laughs> okay well would you like to go first raj I'm actually going to talk about the message that the aliens have for us. Whoa, dude. Excellent. Yes. 
Can you go so, first? I want to know. Okay, then I will go first. Yeah, this this may change the whole dynamic for the rest of the episode. <laughs> now, mine is much more shallow than this. Do we want to... Honestly, is this going to be the last episode of Alien January? No. This is the got, last episode no, of Alien January. No, we've got, we've got one more. There's one more in there, I believe. Do we want to start, I mean, start mathematically, shallow? Mathematically, there isn't one more. Well, we re- well it'll be released on the first day of... Uh, February, February, but okay. And February's for fucking werewolves. I thought we have to, <laughs> we have to decide what. No, February you're right. You're is. right. You're right. Yeah, okay. No, so you, are, listen, you are correct. So listen. In that case, I'm gonna go first. <laughs> uh, we're gonna end with the message from the aliens: what they want us to know, what they're Two trying to impart. Alien to races. Us. Great. I I'm gonna go first in a segment that I'm calling. Uh, 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 look to the stars. Look to the stars. These and are cele- become these, one. These are celebrity alien stories, you guys. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We finally come to it. Uh, this I was actually inspired by. Have you ever heard the story about Jackie Gleason and uh and uh, Nixon? Nixon? Yeah. I I, oh, know, I, th- I thought you were going to say when he actually punched Alice to the moon. <laughs> and she was like these people up here <laughs> what in the heck it's a little green fella Norton Norton <laughs> Norton uh, does anybody know what we're talking about this is old for even us no, like no, I know this... <laughs> like I know that we're from like we're from the past specifically I know that we're A in our mid to late 30s but also that we were but older we were than that when we were last. 20. Yeah. <laughs> With the last people to ever make these references. Yes. Anyway. Th- okay. So basically Jackie Gleason was on a show uh, called the honeymooners. The honeymooners yes. was basically was set- a movie the- starring Mike Epps. B- B- Bill- <laughs> it, was. <laughs> it was, they yeah. rebooted it with Mike Epps. Holy shit. That's true. And Cedric the entertainer. Fucking hell, man! I'm gonna watch the that. Finest, and Cedric the, the Entertainer man played in the abuser. Of course he did. Uh, the, the basically the honeymooners set the the bone structure for the modern sitcom. What yes. we think of as the goofball, chun- chunky guy who's hilarious, has a hot wife that's way too good for him, and they have a wacky neighbor, and they are the Flintstones. They are the they are yep. the the para, like the prototype for the simpsons think of the simpsons that was the honeymooners although at the time they also made a lot more jokes about uh him punching his wife in the face and everybody loved it they were like (laughs) you (laughs) yep (laughs) um (laughs) but uh long story short jackie gleason was a superstar at the time he was such a superstar legend goes he banged rock hudson that he (laughs) (laughs) That's oh, he's that do a classic Hollywood. <laughs> that he <laughs> became, <laughs> that he became friends. Well, it was no secret, no legend that he was pals with uh, Tricky Dick, with Tricky Dick Nixon, and um, <laughs> supposedly legend has it, it that he was always it went need- three different ways. He was always needling uh, Nixon to, uh, and please yes. join in if you guys have additional. Uh, content once I once I tell the story, but he was always a uh, needle and Nixon because he had Jackie Gleason was a renowned UFO buff, and he was always like, I, I gotta I gotta know what 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 about these aliens? You gotta tell me tell me Dick tell me about the aliens, and uh, they would get drunk together supposedly and play pool, and uh, Nixon would laugh and he'd be like, Oh, you're a funny guy, Jackie. You make me laugh. I uh, oh no, there's no aliens, and then supposedly. One night, and this is told to the National Enquirer, I should say, by Jackie Gleason's ex-wife, on whom he che- cheated, and presumably by the style of his co- comedy, uh, popped her in the chops, maybe punched her to the moon once or twice. So she didn't have any reason to uh, not lie about it, I guess. Just take that with a grain of salt is what I'm saying. Uh, she says that he told her that Nixon showed up one night like, wasted and was like jackie it's all true <laughs> it's, uh, 
<laughs> it's all true. There's aliens. Area 51. It's real. Here, look, look. I'll show them to you. And he showed. He supposedly showed him the aliens uh, photographs. Um, anyway, this got me going. Could I was you... like, uh, hmm? nothing. Sorry. Go go Please. on with more about it. Because I Please. I thought of uh, also Jackie Gleason and Richard Nixon talking about race relations drunk. <laughs> I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather not i guess i'd rather not yeah, that that seems like a much different uh conversation that ends badly for everyone yeah yeah i don't think that they're uh but anyway aliens yeah anyway aliens <laughs> um you know i was gonna take a stab at it i think he was gonna be like <laughs> you know all i'm saying is there's three different kinds of irish <laughs> like oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh no jackie um so uh celebrity go- celebrity alien stories here we go this is from uh history channel history.co.uk sky they do great work out there except for uh certain portions of them uh that suck I can't remember. Sky sucks sometimes. Anyway, it does. Not talking Sky about sucks most times, um, but today they're great. So first up, um, you know what? Let's <laughs> let's dance the midnight dance. Let's dance the midnight Always. dance. How about I tell you the story, omitting the parts where you can tell who's telling it, and you try yeah. to tell me who you think, who? what celebrity. Yeah. Yeah, you think this is so star of blank and blank two noted sitcoms uh believed that she and her ex but ex-husband peter mark jacobson were abducted by aliens apparently years before they met they both had similar experiences while driving with their fathers she says they were abducted and had implants placed in their hands and both have had or have the same hand scar to this day. What celebrity uh, has ooh. a hand scar? I'll give you I'll give you some yeah, yes or no questions. Give me a, okay. Five. 80s. Julia Louis oh, Dreyfus. I assume everyone has 80s. to have oh, oh, interesting. an equal uh, number of names. A little later than the 80s. Let's say okay. 90s. I'll even give you that. And okay. um, But was appearing as early as the 80s. And uh, no, good guess though Ju- on Julia Louise Dreyfus. She, um, you know, weirdly enough, I'll bet they went out for some of the same auditions. Okay. Kirstie uh, Alley. <laughs> yeah, that's who. I, that's was that was I was gonna show. Oh, guys, the answer I was looking for was Fran Drescher, oh, the nanny. They definitely went out with the same. Girl. You know, she Sent was working. She, it says here she was working in a bridal shop in Flushing, Queens, when her boyfriend kicked her out in one of those crushing scenes. What was she to do? Where was she to go? She was out on her fanny. Just. Hang out with the aliens the from the other side of the track. And then over the bridge to Flushing to the Sheffield's door. She was there to sell makeup, but the father saw more. She had style. She had flair. She was there. That's how she became the nanny, it says here in the article. I, remember, <laughs> I, remember, I just want everyone to know that that was off the dome. That was oh, just I, off. I did not disbelieve for a the second. the nanny. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm not even gonna make you guess for this one. This was uh, this oh, is I fucking. I like that. I know. We'll do another one. This is uh, okay. Geor- this is Georgia Sukolos, the fucking because aliens guy. The guy behind he- me. <laughs> I don't know if he counts. All right. <laughs> He's behind me. Hey, Giorgio. He is Roger's backdrop, but the guy behind he is me here. is is probably also one of his uh one of his nicknames. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't know if this guy counts as a celebrity because he's just a celebrity for for believing in aliens, in aliens and shit. Yeah. So it's like, all right. Um, our very own Giorgio claims to have seen a UFO. He says on August 8th, 2014, along with 26 other people with night vision goggles in Joshua Tree at the Contact in the Desert conference around midnight. Yeah, where this, we is saw- where, this is the same place where Demi Lovato and Stephen Greer did it. They're in yep. love now. Where we saw believe anything else stars <laughs> inside the Big Dipper, which obviously didn't belong there. And after 10 minutes of observing those two stars, they began to move. 
yes. equidistant from each other up into space, into darkness of the night yes. sky. This happens all the time. So Stephen Greer, we talked about him before in in uh-huh. a in the episode where Demi Lovato and him film a very similar experience in Joshua Tree. Mm-hmm. Every year, uh, maybe a couple times a year, Stephen Greer goes up to Joshua Tree, and they contact aliens through meditation. And I have his app that I've been meaning to use, that they use to meditate with aliens. Whoa. Stephen Greer's app? How does how do, how does one? Okay, go on. You pay five dollars. Pause. Okay, that seems like something the aliens would demand up front. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's we might not this... be back this way. We'll need it's... the five bucks now. It's called the CE Five <laughs> Contact app, and you uh-huh. can learn how they do it in Joshua Tree. And you put... See, here it is. Encounters you take your phone. Is. You take your phone. You put it in your mouth. It says. <laughs> You turn, <laughs> wait, sorry, you turn the app on. You place the phone gently against your tongue and hum. CE5 or CE1, sighting of an ET craft. CE2, physical evidence of ET craft. CE3, sighting of an ET life form. CE4, experience on board an ET craft. CE5, human initiated contact with ETs. Just for a backdrop of what you just explained, that rabbit hole goes really deep. Wow. I, I thought for sure CE5 was going to be making out with Demi Lovato. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did it, folks. I would like to say Doc, me, Dr. Stephen Greer, personally, Contact in the Desert was a complete success. Who oh boy! <laughs> Capital C Contact. <laughs> okay, where were we? Oh, okay. Uh, celebrity alien stories. So, uh... This is going to be another guess that celeb. Okay, yeah. guys? All right. Alan Alda for the win. This celebrity, I'll give you the... uh <laughs> just go fucking, Magnum P.I., the new just one. Just trying to fucking... Just trying to Babe Ruth call shot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Whoa, from downtown, Alan Alda. No, uh, okay. So this is for... Um, for freebies, I'll give you the the decades. I'm gonna say this guy was uh was most popular 60s through the 70s. 60s, yeah. 70s. Dipping into the 50s, oh, maybe even okay. the 80s. Um okay, so claimed many this person claimed many connections to extraterrestrials. When he was born and his family and family doctor remember an unexplainable light beaming over the child's family home. Yeah. I know who it is. He recalled that when he was eight years old, he was telepathically visited by aliens who showed him a future vision of a man wearing a white suit singing to a crowd. Yep. He also said to have seen many UFOs in his adulthood, particularly strange moving lights when traveling through deserts at night. Yep, yep. All right. Uh, I know who it is. Don Knox. Hang on. Can I guess based uh, entirely on American Dead that it's Paul Lind? <laughs> <laughs> it is not. It's not Paul Lind. Not this time. Can still be Don Knotts. Let's go. Don Knotts. Is that who you thought it was? <laughs> I know it is. In his polyester uh, blue jumpsuit with the flared out. With the flared out legs. You can't, you can't the... stop him. Worked in the oh, 50s, 60s, yeah. 70s, 80s, <clears> even <throat> the 90s up until he died. That in, man is a legend. I'm in the he, West Coast. He turned Coast. into a cartoon fish at one point. You're he telling did. me he's not an alien. He turned into a cartoon fish at one point. That is true. Uh, that's Elvis Presley, you guys. Elvis. Yeah. Megan Wait, the really? Pre- Megan the Elvis. Yes. Elvis Presley. That, But that's like a life enriched in alien. Like... That's crazy. I didn't know any of those stories. Um, yeah, yeah. Elvis Presley, uh, when he the family doctor saw an unexplainable light beaming over the home, he saw he was gifted gifted a vision from the aliens of a man in a white suit singing to a crowd, huh, huh, doing karate stances. Huh. <laughs> huh. Don't make me lose. Don't don't make me use my stuff on you, ET. Come over here, baby. <laughs> huh. uh, okay, this next one. Can't decide. Yeah, this is a guess that celeb. Okay, guys, from his classic song Blank to starring in the movie Blank, 
Mm -hmm. This person's work long reflected his fascination with extraterrestrials. But in a case of life imitating art, this person claims to have seen genuine UFOs many times. As a child, they saw so many UFOs that they simply got used to them. And as, a UA, as an adult, saw an unidentifiable object hovering over a field that they believed was a projection of my own mind trying to make sense of this quantum topological doorway into dimensions beyond our own. Damn, that's deep. Who said that? Uh, <laughs> Kevin Costner. Andrew Dice Clay. Good guesses. Both good guesses. <laughs> Both excellent guesses you remember uh, dice's uh, famous song kidnapped by an alien sure 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 How could you oh forget? i forgot he was a singer um that's uh that's david bowie david oh, bowie from his classic yeah. song life on mars to the starring in the movie the man who fell to earth here's the thing about david david's bowie. work long reflected his fascination with extraterrestrials i've seen one man i used when i when i was a boy in surrey would see them all the time silly <laughs> uh, i i thought that that album was about the uh, weird uh, underground nazi literature well it's not not about that but maybe <laughs> that's about aliens too man what was that right. one song called with him and mick jagger dancing in the street dancing yeah on that was uh, yeah. that, that song was, was real... written because mick jagger's wife found him in bed together Yes, we were writing a song. We were <laughs> doing sex or anything. It goes like this. Dancing in the street. Oh, but great music it. video. Hit it, da Nick. Dancing in the streets and dancing in the sheets. That's what I always <laughs> say. I like, I like all of David Bowie's music videos without music. Sure. Oh, that one. The fashion alone. Da -da -da -da. You gotta figure yeah. it out. Something weird has gone on. <laughs> Something it weird's going on Some, here. They're somebody's definitely brain aliens. is melted. <laughs> no, I don't think someone's brain is melting. Someone's brain doesn't understand human fashion. That's David <laughs> Bowie. But he wrote fashion. Uh, yeah, but not for he us. He did write fashion. Anyway, okay, okay, okay. We got. By, by the way, that was a cover. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Does anybody know who Robbie hmm. Williams is? Yes. Yeah, the singer. Who's that? Uh, the he had that singer? music video Top where he pops? took all of his flesh off. What? Yeah, what? You don't know who Robbie Williams is? Sweet. Okay, well, Me and Robbie, Robbie Williams Brit pop from the late 2000s. Robbie Williams took a break from his singing career in public life in 2006 to study, you guessed it, aliens. After supposedly experiencing three UFO encounters, he began attending UFO seminars and conferences and has connected with many fellow UFO enthusiasts. He even said a UFO visited him when he wrote the alien themed song arizona claiming mm -hmm. i had just finished writing a song called arizona arizona which is about alien abduction when there was this glow it was magic well which was it robbie <laughs> <laughs> was it magic or was it alien you know it was kind of a hat on a hat my dude okay uh, next up, guess that celebrity. This person had a lifelong interest in UFOs and claimed to have seen and been watched by UFOs on 16 occasions and even saw a mothership. He said, if you look up in the night sky in the early morning, you see them playing tag between the stars. Man, I might actually think this is Dan Aykroyd. Oh, uh, you know what? That's not a bad guess. Two for the Croyd, huh? Two for the Croyd? Yeah, he's he's lifelong alien enthusiast. I forgot what really started it, but I know mm -hmm. he's like gone exploring. I think he's seen sure. some. I think he, this is it. Sure. I'm probably wrong, but this is my guess. You too, Nate? Uh, uh, let's see. Who's a big tag enthusiast? Uh, <laughs> Rob, <laughs> Rob I mean, Riggle. Rob Riggle. Rob Riggle? Huh? Doesn't, he, doesn't he host a show about playing tags? I guess he shit? does. Okay, okay. All right, one for Rob Riggle. No, he, one he's for... the golf man, but that's hilarious. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> one for the Croyd, uh, both of whom should be really flattered. This is Muhammad Ali, you guys. Oh, oh yeah, oh. I forgot. Muhammad that. Ali yeah. had a lifelong interest in UFOs and claimed to have seen and been watched by UFOs on 16 different occasions and even saw a mothership. He said, if you look up in the night sky in the early morning, you see them playing tag between the stars. 
I forgot there's that part in One Night in Miami, a small little part where him and Malcolm X are just talking about aliens. <laughs> Is that true? No, not at all. Uh, <laughs> I, I haven't watched it yet, so maybe it's and Regina King does well. Yeah. Okay. How's how's Aldous Hodge? I always like seeing that guy. We're we're an alien podcast. <laughs> okay, listen to this. When they were 15, Olivia Newton John says she saw a silver flying object at amazing speeds in the Cambridge countryside. Since then, she's been a firm believer in the existence of extraterrestrial life and was quoted as saying, is she English? Uh, <laughs> yes. I, I thought in she England, was Australian. In England, most people think, now think UFOs are possible. <laughs> 20 years ago, how many people would have thought that? William Shatner. Quite I didn't fittingly, know this one. William Shatner, who famously played... <laughs> <laughs> that guy from... Boston legal. Yeah. Fittingly, William Shatner, who famously played the big giant head on <laughs> Third Rock from the Sun, is a UFO believer. While he admits to having lied about seeing a UFO in the Mojave Desert in 1969, fucking liar, he is still a firm believer in their existence, saying there is no doubt that there is life out there. The mathematics of it lead you to that absolute conclusion. In my mind, there is no doubt that the universe teems, teems with life in all its forms. Yeah, noted astrobiologist, William Shatner. He's in the process of writing a novel about alien abduction. <laughs> I've R. seen R. him. R.I.P. If, if it's I've as good as, if it's as, good as his tech war novels. Big dog. What is, tech war? what is the deal with that? I've seen William Shatner grout his fucking house. Really? I know he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, he had a show called William Shatner Builds a House. Hmm. <laughs> is he still alive? He is. Yeah. He's very cranky. Follow him on Twitter. It's hilarious. Oh, man. Done deal. I just, I definitely thought he was dead until right now. Congratulations, William, on being alive. <laughs> and congratulations to me on this uh, successful segment. Look to the stars. With Jordan. Space Hall. person. Space person. You. You. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I think maybe we should bring trivia into more segments. Uh, more like trivia idea, segments. I am into it. I like the idea that William Shatner has a curse on uh -huh. him and he is to be the yes. last surviving member of the original cast of Star Trek. The I Shatnerian think, amulet. I think, <laughs> <laughs> you think they have like a tontine situation? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> And the last Excuse surviving me. member of the ton of the Star Trek ton team gets, I don't know, Gene Roddenberry's foot. They get. <laughs> Why would you want? <laughs> Why would that be? Does it have special properties? Is it like a thieves hand, a hand of glory? Yeah, no, it's 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 like uh, it's like if you have, you know, uh, the femur of Paul, the apostle or some sure. shit. It's know? just the last remaining relic of Gene Roddenberry. It's not the one it's... they want, but it's the one they get. It yeah, lets you. Right. It lets you walk through David Bowie's topological quadrilateral portal. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Thank you. Thank you.